Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback and let's get started. Okay, so we do have this quartic equation, x to the fourth power minus 2x squared plus the quantity 1 minus 2a multiplied by x plus a minus a squared is equal to 0. And we're going to be solving for x. But there's another variable, which is a, which makes this equation more interesting. So we can call this an equation with parameters or a parametric equation. So in this case, a is a given number, and our solutions are going to be in terms of a. Awesome. Let's get started. And the plan is I'm going to show you two methods uh, to solve this problem. Okay, let's get started with the first method. So my first method actually involves a very interesting method. First of all, what I'd like to do is I'd like to expand this as much as I can. Okay, let's get started. So I have x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus x minus 2ax plus a minus a squared is equal to zero. Awesome. So what am I going to get from here? First of all, notice that we have... A quartic equation, there's a quartic formula which depends on a cubic, so on and so forth. That's going to complicate things. We're going to do it differently. What we're going to do is, this is my plan. I'd like to arrange this equation as a quadratic. And how is that possible? If you focus on A instead of X, you're able to do that. So what I'd like to do is, I'd like to put everything on the right-hand side where A squared is positive, obviously. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to basically throw everything away. Uh, to the other side, so it's going to be like a squared minus a plus 2ax minus x plus 2x squared minus x to the fourth is equal to zero. So basically, I negate everything, right? Okay, that's what I do. Now, let's go ahead and arrange this. What am I supposed to do? a squared. These two terms contain a in them, so I'm going to write it this way. 2x minus 1 times the quantity a. So I've taken care of this one, this one, and this one. Let's keep track, okay? What do I have left? I have the 2x squared minus x minus x to the fourth. And that is equal to zero. Now in this equation, this is a quadratic in A, isn't it? So we can solve it with the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and write it down. A equals negative B, which is the opposite of this coefficient here, negative 2x plus 1, plus minus, absolutely, there's going to be two solutions here, uh, B squared. B squared is going to be 2x minus 1 squared, and then minus 4ac, a is 1 here, a means the coefficient of a squared in this case, 4 times c, which is 2x squared minus x minus x to the fourth. Awesome. So this is going to be my setup, all divided by 2a, again, a is 1, so it's 2. Well, this kind of looks complicated, but when we expand it and simplify it, uh, it's going to get better. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Negative 2x plus 1, plus minus the square root of, okay, if we expand this, it's going to become 4x squared minus 4x plus 1, and if you distribute negative 8x squared plus 4x plus 4x to the fourth. Awesome. And all over 2. Now, what's really awesome about this is that inside the radical, we can simplify this a little bit like this. For example, uh, negative 4x and positive 4x cancel out. And then I can get from here a nicer expression, which is going to be 4x to the fourth um, minus 4x squared, because 4x squared minus 8x squared plus 1. Beautiful. And what makes this even more beautiful is that what we have inside the radical is a perfect square, isn't it? Okay, awesome. So that's equal to what? Well, it is equal to... 2x squared minus 1 quantity squared. Hopefully you notice that. And all over divide by 2. Okay. Now, the square root of something squared, as you know, it's the absolute value, blah, 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 and plus minus, but we already have a plus minus, so we can just go ahead and write it this way. Negative 2x plus 1 plus minus 2x squared minus 1 all over 2. Now, at this point, I'd like to split it up because... Obvious reasons, right? We're going to get negative 2x plus 1 plus 2x squared minus 1 divided by 2. That's going to equal, in this case, we're going to get 2x squared minus, well, and the ones, gonna, ones are going to cancel out, minus 2x divided by 2, and that is going to equal x squared minus x. Awesome. So what, this is one of the A values. We'll get back to that. Let me find the second one. The second one comes from 
uh, using the minus sign here. And of course, you have to negate what's inside the parentheses. Oh, I don't like that way. So I'm going to write it as 2x squared minus 1 all over 2. And obviously, from here, you're going to get negative 2x squared minus 2x, negative 2x squared minus 2x. This time, the ones are not going to cancel out. They're going to add. 1 plus 1 is going to be a 2. But when you divide both sides by 2, you're going to get a nicer expression for a, which is going to be negative x squared minus x plus 1. OK, so I got two a values here, right? There are two a values. This is one of them. And this is the other one. Awesome. Well, we were trying to solve for x, though, right? What is that supposed to mean? Well, if you can solve a in terms of x, and hopefully you can solve x in terms of a, right? Because what we can do is we can just switch roles and now write it as a quadratic again, but this time in x. Okay, here we go. From the first one, let's call this number one and let's call this number two. From the first one, I'm getting x squared minus x is equal to a, which means that this is going to turn into x squared minus x minus a is equal to zero. Beautiful. This is a quadratic in x. Isn't that nice? And now we can go ahead and solve it. x is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is plus 4a, all over 2a, which is 2. Okay, awesome. So this is one of the solutions. The second one comes from the second piece, which is going to be, well, x squared is negative on the right-hand side. Shouldn't we put that on the right-hand side? I mean, left-hand side. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, hopefully. Now we should be getting this equation from here, right? Then uh, this can also be solved because this is also quadratic in x. Awesome. Everything is awesome. Okay. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. Again, it's 1. Minus uh, 4ac. This time it's going to be minus 4 times a minus 1. And of course, this can be simplified, so I'm going to take an extra step to simplify that and write it in the simplest form. It's going to be negative 1 plus minus the square root of, okay, let's take a look at this. 1 minus 4a plus 4. 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. Therefore, we get a 5 minus 4a, and then that all over 2. Therefore, these are going to be the solutions uh, for x in terms of a. Okay, so this is one of the solutions, and this is the other solution. Awesome. Great. This was our first method. Remember, I told you I was going to show you two methods. Here's the second method. The second method, and oh, by the way, once I solve the problem with the second method, I'm not going to go all the way through because you already know the solutions, right? So we don't really need to beat a dead horse, but I just want to show you the methodology. Hopefully you like that as well. Okay. The second method depends on something else, which is kind of different from this approach because this approach involves, you know, solving the equation for A first and then turning into, into an equation in x. But our second method is going to involve the following. So for that purpose, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to take this guy here. Let me go ahead and mark it. Well, I could, I guess I could take the, no, I don't think I can take the original. So let me go ahead and take this guy here. Actually, I was supposed to cut it like this. And then let me go ahead and carry that onto an empty page. I should still be able to do that, right? Okay. Well, kind of getting mixed up with something else here. Nope, I don't want the page to scroll. Okay, here we go. Nice. We got our equation right here with some extra stuff. So let's go ahead and clean those up. Awesome. Now, this is my equation, right, from the original. Now, what am I going to do with this? Okay, what I'm going to do with this is the following. I'm going to manipulate this equation a little bit. You know how we can manipulate this? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take the minus x squared, and I would like to split it up. Well, what do you mean by split it up? Well, here's what I mean. I'm going to take this as um, minus x squared, okay? And then I'll bring the minus 2ax, okay? And then minus a squared. Now, I took this term, half of this term, and then I took this term. Now, there's a reason why I'm doing this. You, you might be like, why is he doing this, right? Well, there's a reason which you're going to understand in a little bit. Since I on, only use minus x squared, I do have another minus x squared here, right? And then uh, we, are, we also use the a squared. Let's not forget that. So I have minus x squared plus x plus a. That's what's left, right? Okay, cool. Now, this is going to be beautiful, I think. This is awesome. This is nice. Because if you look at this term, if you look at this expression, it has six terms, so it should be factorable, but not until you write it this way. Okay, so here's how it proceeds. 
So I'm going to write this expression, the three terms in parentheses, and hopefully you're going to see what I'm talking about from this point on. And I'm going to write this with a minus sign like this. Awesome. Do you see it now? If you don't, let me tell you what it is. The expression inside the first parentheses is basically a perfect square. Isn't that perfect? Awesome. And what it does is you can actually go ahead and subtract. Okay, what happens if you subtract a square from a fourth power? Well, you get difference of two squares. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so using this difference of two squares, we can factor it because this is like x squared squared, right? Okay, so I do get difference of two squares. If I factor this using difference of two squares, I should be getting x squared plus x plus a as one of the factors. The other factor is going to be x squared minus x minus a because you have to negate everything. And then minus, I have x squared minus x minus a. What makes this real awesome is we get a common factor. Beautiful. And from here, we get x squared minus x minus a multiplied by, uh-oh, we got to fix that, OCD. So x squared minus x minus a multiplied by x squared plus x plus a minus 1, set it equal to 0, and we are done. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.